now let's talk about a photograph, okay? Think about a photograph. Um, today there's discussions about how, to what extent photography is quote-unquote an art. But leaving that aside, let's think about a photograph of, I don't know, a family event in your life, all right? And you make this photograph of a family event. And it's a really, really good photo. Everybody looks really nice. The lighting's great. Maybe it was a professional photographer, whatever. But it's a really great event. You know, maybe your wedding picture, whatever. You, you make up the event. It could even be just a stage photo in the studio. But it's a photo that's made for a utilitarian purpose, okay? You sit down. You want to commemorate this event that you're having a party and you want to commemorate it. You're having your wedding. You want to commemorate it. You're graduating from high school and you want to commemorate it. So you take this picture to record the event, to record what you look like when the event took place. Now you have a friend who wasn't a, or a relative who wasn't able to come to this event, so you send that person a copy of the picture. And you send that person a copy of the picture um, to say, again, here's my event that you missed, you know, I thought you'd like to see a picture of it, um, to get a sense of what it was like, to get a sense of, you know, to know what I look like today. You haven't seen me in a year, uncle so-and-so, so here's a picture of me, what I look like now, you know. Well, that picture has a purpose, but it is also, you know, it has a very utilitarian purpose of recording an event or recording what you looked like at that time. But it also has a sort of a higher purpose in that it can be enjoyed just for, you know, a person that li likes you, likes looking at your image, right? It can be enjoyed for its own innate beauty. So let's say you send your picture to your uncle, and your uncle hangs it on his refrigerator, okay? And let's say that your uncle has a friend who's a photography expert, right? And Or something, just like whatever. Um, and the person comes over and says, wow, that's a beautiful picture. That really needs to be framed, because that's just a work of art in itself. I don't care who it is or what it is, that's just a beautiful picture. So you hang up the picture, right? And then, I don't know, and then he, so he gets the picture framed, and it kind of, and he holds that picture on his wall for the next 20 years or something, right? So someday your uncle's grandkids come along and say, you know, I've always enjoyed looking at that picture at my uncle's house. I don't even know who's in the picture, but I want to keep it. Um, you know, um, in the old previous textbook we used in this class, um, there is Garrison, an article by Garrison Keillor on writing letters, and he says, you know, a letter can be a work of art if it lasts long enough. You know, you can write a letter, just a throwaway note to somebody, and from your perspective, a short note, but that other person values that note, and they save it and see something in it that's valuable. And a hundred years from now, that person's ancestors or, or descendants, rather, sorry, uh, are looking through that person's chest of mementos and finds your letter and oh here's great grandma's letter from so and so and you know they don't know who you are or whatever but it was a letter that went to their great grandma and so they appreciate it and it and it and it evokes our time which for them is you know 100 years past you know like us finding a letter from the 1890s or the 19 zeros and so it becomes a thing appreciated into itself, even though it had an earlier meaning, right? Um, and that's what you know, sort of the you know, sort of the boundaries of art versus utility. So we say something is more truly an art when it's done more truly for its own sake than for than for any utilitarian purpose. Um, the less utilitarian it is, the more truly art it is. And that idea was what the ancient Greeks had and what it, we still have today. Um, oftentimes we criticize artists when they seem to quote unquote go commercial, right? A lot of people make fun, say, of, t today one example would be Thomas Kincaid, and people sort of make fun of him as being too quote unquote commercial because they, they feel that the value of art should be in the art itself and not in the money the artist makes out of it. This is also gets back to the idea of the starving artist. You know, the artist wasn't supposed to profit because he was supposed to do his work purely out of love for the work. So what does this have to say about liberal arts? Well, the liberal, 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 liberal arts are academic subjects that we learn in part for their own sake. All right. Um, unlike studying engineering, or un, you know, very few people study engineering for its own sake. They usually study it because they want to be engineers or they want to create something. Very few people study um, business for its own sake. If they do that, they usually study economics, not business. If they really want to study sort of the intellectual aspects of business, 
those who major in business major in it because they want to be business people. Well, an art, a liberal art, was a subject that was studied for its own sake. We still use that term again today to make the person because the person's interested in that subject. But again, these two meanings, these two terms kind of went back and forth. So, um, the liberal arts were also the arts that were necessary for a free person to function in society. Again, to make them a better person, to make them a better citizen. Uh, the liberal arts were the arts that made a person free because they gave the person those critical thinking skills that I've alluded to previously. And by the Middle Ages, the ancient Greeks and the ancient Romans attempted brief catalogs of the liberal arts, probably the earliest no one is in Plato's book, The Republic. But um, sometime between sort of the late Roman period and the Middle Ages, people had settled on seven subjects that they considered to be truly the liberal arts. Those seven subjects were in turn divided into two groups, a group of three and a group of four. Um, these were known by two names, the quadrivium and the trivium. Quadrivium being literally a group of four, and trivium being literally a group of three. Um, the seven liberal arts were logic, rhetoric, grammar, geometry, arithmetic, music, and astronomy. Okay? The trivium were the three arts related to language, and um, the, th the quadrivium were the four arts related to mathematics. Um, geometry was considered to be math in space. It was, you know, shape, you know, measurement of shapes and such as it is today. Although, interestingly enough, the ancients taught it first before they taught numbers. Arithmetic is, you know, just that, addition of subtraction, multiplication, division, algebra, and so forth. Music was certainly the study of how to play instruments and sing, but more than that, it was the study of notes, okay? It was the study of harmony and relationships. And that's kind of important because um, the, um, the ancient Greeks had this view of what we call harmonia, that everything in life, that the entire universe is governed according to a set of rules, and that people have to obey those rules or bad things happen. All right, We call this the natural law. And the Greeks would look at all the proportions in nature and how um, things kind of match up, follow patterns, you know, trees of a given species always grow to similar shapes and sizes and such. You know, animals, you know, you can look, breed a dog, right? And dog breeds generally follow, you know, dogs of the same breed will look very similar to one another. But there are patterns that you can determine in, in, in nature and kind of follow. Um, one, you know, there are things about proportions of the body. These are traditional in art. Um, that, for example, you can measure a certain part of the body and it's always a certain proportion to another part. You know, a, a person's height is always so many times the length of their feet and so forth. I always forget what the exact numbers are. Well, this is called, what, we, what was called music was the study of proportions and, and ratios. Because, of course, in music, you make harmony by ratio. Um, 